the general introduction of uh, electrical vehicle its block diagram and what are the uh, components which are uh, making this uh, particular electric vehicle they are the major components are motor battery and the controller and in this uh, last unit you have to perform the last laboratory experiment uh, which is experiment number 9 and uh, it is uh, either a industrial visit or a case study on uh, case study so due to pandemic uh, situations we are not uh, arranging the industrial visit so we'll go for the second option that is the case study of any one electric vehicle with respect to specifications of motor battery and controller so you know uh, as the electric uh, motors or electric vehicles they are uh, uh, worldwide they are being manufactured nowadays okay so in india also and uh, over the globe or in abroad also so uh, motors uh, means for example you can take the example of tesla ford mercedes um, then uh, bmw and so on so forth tata even uh, tesla uh, so all these are uh, producing the electric vehicles so i give you a general uh, brief idea about uh, all these and uh, what you have to do in the activity you have to consider a particular uh, um, company so maybe a tesla one can take a ford or even tesla there are uh, different models Uh, tesla model s tesla model x and so on so forth uh, so you can take one example and for that particular car electric car you can find the specifications of the components like what is the which type of motor they are using they may be using three phase induction motor or they may be using brushless dc motor or they may be using any permanent uh, magnet synchronous motor or so on so forth so what is the type of motor uh, what are their specifications then uh, what is the uh, battery type they are using there may be lead acid battery or lithium ion battery or many ion batteries are uh, available and they are not uh, unique they are having difference in their characteristics so based on that you have to for that particular uh, type of uh, company or particular type of model which uh, battery is being used which type of charger they are uh, preferring and all and uh, what sort of controllers along with this motor and battery what is the interface what is the electronic controller uh, they are using uh, so all these uh, you have to uh, do as a case study and that will be uh, for any one electric vehicle okay so um, for all these you have to write down even specifications and all okay so let us uh, start our uh, topic i'll first of all switch off my video to uh, reduce the bandwidth requirement and uh, i'll start with the topic so the learning objectives in this so after doing this activity the students should be able to draw and explain the block diagram of electric vehicle then they should be able to differentiate between the gasoline vehicle hybrid vehicle and all electric vehicles nowadays even hydrogen vehicles are also uh, hydrogen fuel uh, vehicles are also in uh, research uh, part they are not uh, yet commercialized but that is one of the um, type of the motor um, uh, means uh, vehicle so you should uh, know about that then mention the specifications of each component or block of that electric vehicles so keep in uh, keeping in mind these things you have to perform that particular activity now this is the general uh, look of this uh, gasoline vehicle or the vehicle which uh, we are uh, usually using and why we want to uh, why this uh, particular um, portion is included in the syllabus of electronic engineer is because of uh, the fact that as an engineer 
uh, entc engineer or maybe electrical engineer or maybe it or computer engineer mechanical engineer either you will be getting a job in core industry or in it industries if you will get a job in it industries then you have to uh, develop your logic and the softwares you should know but if you want to work in core industries then most of the core industries are in automotive sector and uh, these vehicles or automobiles is uh, one of them and that's why uh, this is included in the syllabus so you should be aware uh, about this fact so now our uh, classical vehicle which is the gasoline uh, it is uh, having uh, it is looks it looks like this and uh, it are uh, the major components of this uh, vehicle they are shown and named uh, so that uh, you should be able to know so first uh, major component in that is the electronic control module so this uh, uh, classical vehicles are also using the electronic controller uh, module which controls the engine as well as the accessories of the motor maybe on the dashboard to um, monitor the speed uh, the um, presence or um, I means uh, what is the extent of fuel available uh, then um, temperature uh, all these uh, things you can monitor uh, on this and uh, for that purpose uh, you will require the um, electronic uh, control module then there is a internal combustion engine uh, which is shown in this uh, red uh, block so which is a spark ignited so this spark ignited engine it is having a fuel injection system so this is the fuel injection system and usually the fuel is poured at this particular point so fuel pouring system is there and uh, you can pour this fuel into the fuel tank so which is a gasoline fuel tank and uh, with the help of this fuel pump you can pump this fuel through this fuel line to this injection system so fuel injection system will inject the fuel in the uh, internal combustion engine uh, which is a spark ignited and uh, the fuel burns and the engine starts rotations and this uh, rotations of this uh, engine uh, should be transmitted through this transmission system to the shaft and uh, from that shaft it will be uh, transmitted to this Uh, wheels so that these wheels will rotate and the um, uh, car will run now along with this uh, when the fuel burns then it uh, should have some exhaust system so exhaust system is there and this exhaust system will emit some dangerous gases like co and all and uh, that will pollute the environment and that's why global warming is taking place and along with this one auxiliary battery small battery is used and uh, that is for uh, providing the supply to all these electronic control modules as well as for uh, for this spark uh, ignition system and all that so that uh, your um, control panel will get the supply from this battery so these are the components uh, of uh, our Uh, normal uh, or conventional or a classical vehicle so i hope you know all this then what is the need for electric vehicle so let us see that so first major is the over dependence on petrol and diesel and nowadays we know that the stock of petrol and diesel that is also decreasing day by day so due to that uh, there is a need to uh, devise a electric vehicle also another major reason is the rising prices of petrol and diesel so hikes are hikes of petrol and diesel prices they are taking um, daily so that's why um, to make the uh, cost effective systems uh, we need uh, electric vehicles then pollution and the uh, 
resultant global warming so because these um, uh, gasoline vehicles they are producing dangerous gases and which are uh, increasing the pollution in the atmosphere and which is raising the global warming and that's why the seasons are also getting um, transferred and um, there is no um, any season for four months which is in india it was the standard for four months there will be summer winter and rainy season nowadays they are mixing it up and uh, that is the reason of uh, global warming okay and uh, another more uh, important reason is they are uh, this conventional or gasoline vehicles they are producing the noise which is a irritating one and uh, we want to want again this noise pollution also in order to reduce this noise pollution so there is a need of uh, alternate power sources and uh, there is a need for eco friendly vehicles and the major solution of that is the electric vehicles or heavy electric vehicles and that's why uh, that is the need of uh, electric vehicle now what is the term electric vehicle so electric vehicle is an automobile that is propelled by one or more electric motors using electrical energy stored in energy storage device so this automobile that is the electric vehicle it is propelled by one or more electric motors and uh, the motors means more motors means one may be driving the um, uh, wheels another may be driving the windshield wipers uh, and all Uh, another motor may be used to uh, raise or lower the windows of power uh, power windows so uh, uh, raising lowering the power windows then um, for uh, windshield wipers so for all these purpose you will require more number of uh, propelled um, more number of electric motors okay and the source they are using is the energy storage device and more popularly uh, used uh, energy storage device is the battery and that's why these motors are also called as the battery operated vehicles or bov now the motors what are the uh, major components of these uh, electric vehicles so preliminary components are the motor controller power source and the transmission then this uh, motor operates on dc or ac so motor is there and dc source is there now uh, to run this motor you will require any controller and that controller will be a dc converter it may be a dc to dc converter or it may be a dc to ac converter so that may be a chopper or it may be a um inverter so depending on which type of motor they are using these controllers are there and a transmission system which transmits this mechanical power developed by this motor to the wheels through the shaft arrangement so these are the major components or primary components of this now what are the uh, if we'll compare this electrical vehicle versus the gasoline vehicle then they are having some advantages as well as some disadvantages so let us see what are the advantages of electrical uh, vehicles so as the first requirement uh, first advantage is there is no requirement any gas so no gas is required or no petrol no diesel is required for operation of these motors then there is no emission as uh, um, no fuel is being burned there won't be any emission of any gases or um, any pollution or any noise and it is a cost effective though the cost of initial investment in battery is more the um, over the long period it is economical vehicle because the cost uh, may be initial cost may be if uh, for example if a petrol uh, or a diesel car it cost around about 8 to 10 lakhs then the electric vehicle it cost around 20 to 25 lakhs so
so that is the cost but it is only initial cost investment but the mileage if you will see then for this particular company they have mentioned that 2 cents per mile whereas the petrol or gasoline it requires 12 plus cents per mileage so that means the uh, these systems are uh, cost effective in long run and they are low maintenance since they are uh, in gasoline type of vehicles most of the parts are moving one they require frequent maintenance but here in electric vehicles there are no such moving parts they are very less and that's why the maintenance is very low then it uh, does not produce any noise that's why uh, low noise whereas in gasoline type of uh, they are uh, generating a large noise and over a payback period this uh, uh, vehicle electric vehicle is advantageous or cost effective but there is certain payback period for that okay then what are the drawbacks or disadvantages of this is the high initial cost that i have already told you many times that of the conventional vehicles that is the major drawback then short driving range that is range uh, is defined for uh, that is the mileage uh, once the battery is charged uh, the vehicle may run up to 80 miles or it may be uh, it may run for 300 miles or 500 miles depending on the manufacturer it will uh, um, uh, give the particular uh, uh, driving range but they are the short driving ranges as compared to the gasoline type of vehicle so that is the major drawback of this again the major drawback is the recharging takes place uh, much longer time than refueling gasoline so because of this lack of charging infrastructure and uh, major uh, uh, research and developments uh, worldwide they are taking place in the development of the charging infrastructure uh, because whenever uh, for conventional vehicle you can uh, move to a petrol pump and you can uh, refill the tank within a uh, few minutes but that is not the case of electric uh, vehicle so for charging it takes much longer time and uh, the duration initially it was uh, 8 to 10 hours but nowadays as the uh, r&d is more focusing on the charging infrastructure uh, they are they have reduced that uh, time from 8 hours to 2 hours and still the research is going on so that the charging will take place within a uh, few minutes or a fraction of hour you can say okay and then battery pack takes more space and weight of the vehicle which otherwise is available to the people so in uh, most of the car or buses since uh, to increase the voltage range more number of cells they are of batteries they are connected in series and uh, they are taking more space as well as the weight of the battery is more and that's why the capacity of that uh, vehicle will be restricted for the people so these are the major uh, drawbacks of this uh, particular uh, motor and now coming to the block diagram so block diagram of this electric vehicle is very simple it is having a battery and uh, as battery is there it will require some charger so battery and charger will be the two blocks and the major block is the electric motor so or the traction motor so this battery will control the this motor through this power controller uh, power converter so this power converter uh, if you are using uh, this uh, motor as a brushless dc motor then it may be of uh, three phase um, it may be a uh, converter which is generating a three phase trapezoidal waveform or if this um, uh, electric motor if it is a three phase induction motor then this converter may be a uh, three phase inverter which is generating three phase ac supply or if we are using this electric motor as a dc motor 
then it may be a chopper which will be uh, varying this uh, voltage battery voltage to somewhat lower ranges or variable ranges so that speed of this motor will change and along with this power controller you will need some drive control signals so drive control signals may be uh, whether to uh, operate this motor in forward direction or in reverse direction or so uh, so uh, or maybe a regeneration has to take place so that this drive control signals will give to this power converter and once this motor will rotate this rotational mechanical energy should be transferred to the wheels through this transmission drive system so this transmission drive system will transmit this mechanical power to through the shaft to the wheels so that this uh, car will move so very simple block diagram of this uh, electric vehicle is there but uh, you have to take care that this uh, while designing we are using here electronic components and battery so as we are using electronic components and battery their uh, electronic circuit may get fail and which may cause any hazardous situation so if it is a bus carrying 40 50 40 to 50 people and accident um, a sudden failure uh, occurs in this electronic system it may cause any accident and that may cause casualty so that's why your electronic system should be reliable and even though it fails it should fail safe that is the motor should stop if any component of electronic circuit fails motor should stop so that uh, any hazardous situation will not occur okay so this is the general explanation of the block diagram now these are the key components of all electric vehicles so these are the key components this is the electric traction motor shown in red then power electronic converter in blue then dc to dc converter again in blue then thermal or cooling system is shown over here then this is the auxiliary battery on board charger is shown in blue then there is a transmission and a charge port and a traction battery pack all these so these components are shown now let us see uh, them one by one and how this uh, these components are being utilized to run this car so first is the electric traction motor so this electric traction motor uses power from the traction battery pack so from this traction battery pack this particular traction motor it is using the power and this motor drives the vehicles uh, uh, vehicles wheels through this transmission system okay then this uh, electric traction motor it may be of various types so there are uh, many types available maybe brushless dc motor maybe permanent magnet synchronous motor maybe ac induction motor or it may be interior permanent magnet motor or it may be permanent magnet switch reluctance motor so these are the types of uh, motors and uh, they can be used for this electric vehicles and depending on the manufacturer to manufacturer this uh, use of this electric traction motor will differ okay then second component is the power electronic controller so this power electronic controller unit it manages the flow of electrical energy delivered by the traction battery controlling the speed of the electrical traction motor and the torque it produces it also controls the motor speed direction and the regeneration action while uh, you are using the brakes you can use that uh, energy to charge the battery that is the regeneration then next component is the dc to dc converter so this converter converts higher voltage dc power from the traction battery pack 
to the lower voltage dc power which are needed to run the vehicle accessories and recharge the auxiliary battery okay so now there are two types of batteries as i have already told you this is the auxiliary battery and another is the traction battery so this auxiliary battery the uh, it is providing the electricity to power vehicles accessories so all accessories like uh, it may be lamps may be internal lamps or headlamps then it may drive the motor uh, which is driving the windshield wipers or it may be driving the motor which may be used to lower or raise the power windows and so on so forth so for that purpose this auxiliary battery is being used and the second type of battery which is the major component of this particular battery operated vehicle is the traction battery so this is the next part traction battery and this traction battery it stores electricity for use by the electric traction motor now as there are number of cells they are being used to increase the battery voltage so that battery voltage may depend on the uh, particular vehicle if it is a uh, lmv type of vehicle it may use a battery traction battery of 48 to 72 volts or it may use a, uh, for heavy duty battery it may use 178 volts so that means these number of cells and this battery size is more uh, for this traction battery pack and while charging you have to take care that while charging this particular battery it should not get heated if it is being heated then it is spread all over entire the entire this uh, vehicle that is below the seats it is uh, placed so if this battery gets heated then the seats will also get heated and it may cause another uh, danger so that's why you have to uh, take care that this uh, uh, batteries should not be uh, heated while charging okay then next component of this is the charge port now for charging uh, and uh, charging of these both these batteries you will require some external supply to connect now in order to connect the external supply you will require this charge port that is it is nothing but a connector and this charge port allows the vehicle to connect to the external power supply in order to charge the traction battery pack as well as the auxiliary battery pack okay so that is the use of this charger port and this charger port is then connected to the onboard charger which is the next part now this uh, external battery uh, external power which we are connecting through this charge port that is the connector it will be connected to this onboard charger now this onboard charger takes the incoming ac electricity supplied via the charge port and converts it into dc for charging the traction battery as well as the auxiliary battery now there is a um, battery monitoring uh, system uh, that is called as bms and this monitors the battery characteristics such as voltage current temperature and stage of the charge while charging the pack so uh, this is the unit of onboard charger and then the next important unit is the thermal system or cooling system now as we know that the temperature of this battery you have to keep cool or you have to keep it down and in order uh, even though for this motor also while rotations it uh, may get heated so in order to cool this the thermal system is there which is a cooling system and this system maintains a proper operating temperature range of the engine electric motor power electronics and other components so this system is maintaining the temperature of 
all these components and the last important unit in this is the transmission unit which transfers the mechanical power from the electrical traction motor to drive the wheels so i hope you have understood what are the basic key components of this uh, all electric uh, vehicle and how they operates and what are their functions so functions of each block you should know and in your activity you should find out what are the specifications of each block in this particular model okay now let us see one by one in detail first is the traction motor so first component traction motor so all these components which we have seen numbering 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so all these in the same sequence we'll see it one by one in detail so first is the traction motor so electric traction motor it is using the power from the traction battery pack and this motor drives the vehicle spins so as you know that uh, traction battery pack is the major source for providing the voltage to this traction motor and once that motor is rotating that energy or mechanical power we are transmitting through this uh, transmission system to the wheels now some vehicles they use motor generators that performs both drive and regeneration functions now why this uh, regeneration functions uh, they are needed that i have already told you because uh, regeneration means what while running condition while the car is running if you are applying brakes or if that motor is on descent car is on descent then in that case the uh, speed of the motor will start reducing and that energy we are uh, um, wasting in the terms of heat when we are applying brakes so instead of wasting it in the form of heat we should use it to charge the batteries so that is the regeneration and this will definitely increase the mileage of the car if the batteries are being charged while running now i know uh, one of the example nowadays uh, few lifts are there which are making use of this regeneration principle and because of this regeneration they have reduced the uh, billing system uh, like anything so that's why while breaking the motor or whenever the motor is on descent you should uh, use the regeneration principle to charge the motor okay uh, to charge the battery okay then what are the types of these traction motors they are used so they may be uh, brushless uh, type of dc motors so as i have already told you this uh, brushless type of uh, dc motors they are uh, um, very widely used in most of the lightweight vehicles so for lightweight vehicles like two wheelers three wheelers and so on so two wheelers like electric scooters and electric motorcycles so electric scooters may be for example i can give you tvs crayon 22 motors hero, hero electric neo electric scooters yamaha ec03 etc so these are the examples of electric scooters then for electric motorcycles there may be the examples like torque motors e motion motors menza motors chinese evoke motorcycles etc so these are the uh, electric motorcycles and electric scooters used in two wheelers and in three wheelers all e rickshaws and e autos they are using brushless type of dc motors now second type of uh, motors they are using manufacturers are using it is permanent magnet synchronous motor pmsm now these permanent magnet synchronous motors they are widely used in high performance electric motorcycles electric cars 
and electric buses so for example electric motorcycles like energica motors bramo impulse r so these are the examples of electric motorcycle then for electric cars chevy bolt ev then nissan leaf ev and hypercar pinin faran farina batista then for electric buses tata ultra urban so these are the examples which are using this pmsm motors now third is the ac induction motor that is your three phase induction motor so these three phase induction motors they are used in two wheelers like which are the high performance electric motorcycles so for example zero motorcycles lightning motorcycles ls218 model etc then few manufacturers they are using interior permanent magnet motor ipmm motor and these ipmm motors the uh, these ipmm motors they are uh, used in two wheelers and four wheelers like m plus motors m plus 1 that is two wheelers example and four wheelers like uh, lightning uh, motorcycles ls218 and uh, sorry the ac induction motor which i have given the example uh, for four wheelers they are using tesla roadster 2008 tesla model s tesla model x then mahindra e vertigo then mahindra e2 then mahindra e supra tata tiger and tata tiago so they are using this ac induction motor and permanent magnet switch reluctance motor that is pmsrm it is used in four wheelers and it is used majorly in tesla model 3 so these are the uh, various motors used by various uh, manufacturers and uh, this information is available on net you can go through that and for a particular model you can find out which type of motor they are preferring most then generally these brushless dc motors they are used for lmvs as i have already told you because of the small size good torque and easy control and simpler to maintain it is more durable these these brushless dc motors are more preferred in lmvs and also it is having 85% to 90% more efficient and it is able to self start and this is the pictorial view of a brushless dc motor of uh, this is the um, model bm 1412 zxf and uh, it is for uh, 1200 watt 48 volt so it is operating on 48 volt that's why it is used for lmvs and uh, this is the uh, model Uh, i have downloaded it from net itself so you can go through that and for every model uh, which type of motor is being used which type of battery is being used which type of controller is being used you should download it in your activity and you have to test it along with that particular specifications okay then the next uh, major component is the power electronic controller second component power electronic con converter or controller so this power electronic controller this unit manages the flow of electrical energy delivered by the traction battery controlling the speed of the electrical traction motor and the torque it produces so this is the function of this and it also controls the motor speed direction and regeneration then it increases efficiency reliability and extended battery life time okay then uh, this is the model of that particular uh, power electronic uh, controller uh, i have shown one model for that and uh, you can see 
it is a tightly sealed and compact one so uh, why it is uh, tightly sealed and compact one because of because it should safe guard all the electric components which are being used in this controller so all the electric components they should be uh, kept away from the dust as well as from the water because um in our country the, a lot of dust is there or, or whenever the vehicle is moving on the road dust may be there and that dust should not uh, uh, decrease the life or uh, functioning of that particular electronic component that's why it is a sealed one and even in rainy season uh, the vehicle may goes through dips so water may enter into vehicle during rainy season and this electronic circuitry should be provided from this uh, water and dust and that's why it is a uh, sealed tightly sealed and compact one okay so the next component is the dc to dc converter this device converts the higher voltage uh, dc power from the traction battery pack to lower voltage dc power need to run the vehicle accessories and recharge the auxiliary battery so the function of this converter is to recharge the auxiliary battery as well as to drive that particular motor and if it is a dc motor you have to i have already told you if it is a dc motor then chopper like circuitry will be there in this converter so that it will lower the voltage levels of this battery pack uh, voltage traction battery pack voltage to lower voltage so that the speed will be a variable one if it is a three phase induction motor they are using then it should be converted this converter should convert that uh, dc power from this traction battery pack into three phase ac power and if it is a brushless dc motor then it should control this converter should convert this um, traction battery pack voltage into three phase trapezoidal wave form so that the vehicle uh, speed can be controlled and another uh, function is to uh, recharge the auxiliary battery even and uh, that is the uh, purpose and even in uh, case of regeneration whenever you are applying brakes this converter should act as if a generator and should feed back the energy to this traction battery pack so that is the this dc to dc converter then i have already told you there are two types of batteries one is the auxiliary battery and another is the traction battery pack so this is the auxiliary battery which supplies the power to all electric accessories so in an electric drive vehicle the accessory uh, auxiliary battery provides electricity to power vehicle accessories so accessories may be uh, like uh, your uh, dashboard controls or uh, maybe uh, like lamps maybe internal lamps or over uh, head lamps or uh, it may be driving the motors which are uh, driving the windshield wipers or they may be driving the motors which may be used for lowering or raising the power windows etc so uh, these batteries should be rechargeable and uh, this is uh, one of the example model used for uh, one of the model and the second uh, type of battery is the traction battery pack so you can see uh, below the seats of this uh, particular vehicle uh, large number of uh, packs or battery Uh, connected in series they are used in this uh, traction battery pack so traction battery pack stores electricity for use by the electric traction motor and it should be rechargeable and uh, usually lithium ion batteries are uh, more preferred in that uh, there are many types of batteries uh, lead acid nickel uh, metal uh, hydride lithium ion lithium polymer lithium iron phosphate but all the lithium ion batteries they are not equal uh, so uh, there may be some uh, batteries which may be unsafe for evs uh, maybe uh, 
uh, used for um, uh, low um, low power um, uh, vehicles or LMVs, or um, it may be used for the heavy duty um, um, vehicles. So that depends on uh, the type of battery um, for which application you are using it. That means uh, for uh, traction purpose, traction battery purpose, but for whether it is for LMV or whether it is for heavy duty vehicle. Okay. Then next uh, important part is the charging port. And uh, as uh, these uh, traction batteries, I have told you, they are um, they are of uh, number of batteries. So many batteries they are connected in series. Uh, to increase the voltage uh, levels so like uh, 178 volts uh, in uh, heavy duty um, vehicles and uh, for lmvs it may be 48 volts or 72 volts now since so many batteries are used in series to increase the voltage while charging these batteries they may get heated so you have to take care that while charging these batteries they should not be heated because they are placed uh, below the seats. And if these batteries get heated, maybe during charging or maybe under running condition, then there, uh, the seats may get heated and it may cause the casualty or accidents. Okay. Then the next important part is the charging port. The charge port allows the vehicle to connect to an external power supply in order to charge the traction battery pack. Now, uh, this uh, in this picture, I have shown that uh, some external supply we are connecting to charge the battery pack. So we cannot directly connect it to di directly to battery pack. So it should be connected through a connector. So this is the connector or a charging port. So this... Uh, uh, charge port, it is acting as an interface between the output of charger and the onboard charger, which is connected to the uh, battery, uh, traction battery pack through the charger, which is onboard charger. So it is simply a connector. And as it is a connector, we are connecting this output of this charger to the battery pack and uh, uh, it should be passed through the onboard charger. So this connector, it is connected to onboard charger and that onboard charger will be connected to then uh, the traction battery. So now as per this, uh, as it is shown, as it is a connector or port, there are, uh, there are various standards available uh, for these uh, connectors. So as per the standards, these ports are available and classified. So, for example, uh, Chedago is uh, one of the standard. Another standard is uh, uh, GBT. So, these are the standard uh, ports or uh, connectors. So, different uh, specifications are available for different ports and various manufacturers are using these different ports. So, you have to mention for that particular manufacturer or for that particular model, which type of uh, uh, this charging port or this charge port is being used. Okay. Then next is the onboard charger. This onboard charger, it takes the incoming AC electricity supplied via the charge port and converts it into DC power for charging the traction battery. It monitors battery characteristics such as voltage, current, temperature, and state of the charge while charging the pack. It is also called the battery management system, which I have already told you, termed as BMS. And it is the link or interface between the charger and the batteries. And the performance of the electric vehicles, it depends on these BMS. Okay. And these BMS are very critical uh, part for that particular vehicle. And uh, one model, I have shown it here, 
is this onboard charger so this onboard charger is connected to the charge port and through that charge port you can connect external charger so and the another end of this uh, onboard charger is connected to the battery pack traction battery pack okay and the next important uh, part of this component of this ev is the thermal system so thermal system which is used for cooling this system maintains a proper operating temperature range of the engine electric motor power electronics and other components so uh, this is uh, everywhere uh, the part which is getting heated the temperature of that is maintained uh, by some coolants through this thermal system now there are again uh, many standard coolants are available and for a particular model which type of coolants they are preferring that also you have to mention in your activity and the last part of this uh, electric uh, vehicle is the transmission so this transmission electric transmission it tra uh, the transmission transfers mechanical power from the electric traction motor to drive the vehicles or uh, wheels of the vehicles so the traction motor is connected to the shaft on which wheels are connected so that shaft will be connected through this transmission system so that the um, electric mechanical power developed by that uh, traction motor will be transferred to the shaft through this transmission system and then it will be applied to the wheels okay so uh, on net uh, this open this is a close uh, view uh, selected there is a open view also which is available and uh, how this transmission takes place in this particular uh, motor uh, vehicle that is also shown so all the videos are uh, available on this uh, on the net so you can uh, download uh, all these and uh, you can prepare your activity so i hope you have understood all the components which are uh, um, covered in the electric vehicle so these are the three systems uh, i have shown this is the conventional vehicle which is using this fuel uh, which is burning and uh, in this engine and this engine through this transmission system will transfer this uh, energy to the wheels of the vehicle and in battery operated vehicle this is the battery operated vehicle instead of fuel we are using battery and instead of engine we are using a motor or generator set and this battery is running battery is operating this uh, motor and this motor uh, when it is running that mechanical energy will be transmitted through this transmitter to the shaft and to the wheels of this uh, particular vehicle and there is one more vehicle which is a hybrid electric vehicle so in hybrid electric vehicle both these systems are used so fuel is there engine is there and transmission system is there as well as battery is there motor generator is there and a transmission system is there so whenever fuel is there then it will rotate this engine it will be uh, transmitting the energy to this uh, particular wheels and while uh, running this motor it will charge this battery and whenever you will switch over to the battery then this particular portion will be disconnected and battery will switch on this particular motor and the motor will be operating this particular transmission system and wheels will rotate so in hybrid vehicle both uh, fuel as well as battery they are used and there is certain switching arrangement is made so that you can switch over from fuel to battery or battery to fuel so this is the example of hybrid electric vehicle uh, almost uh, same systems are there uh, but it is having this uh, fuel tank uh, that is gasoline as well as this uh, internal combustion engine and this uh, power electronic controller converters then thermal system transmission and electric generator also and electric traction motor 
so it is having this electric traction motor also electric uh, internal combustion engine also then battery also and this fuel also so this fuel will operate this combustion engine this bat uh, battery will operate this electric trans uh, tra traction motor and you can switch it from one to another in some hybrid vehicles plug in facility is there so in previous one this particular fuel was running this motor and uh, when this car was running this battery was getting charged there was no external plug in for charging this particular uh, um, electric system but in plug in hybrid vehicle there is a system for charging this batteries also so along with this fuel so fuel system as well as battery system and uh, electric vehicle as well as the conventional vehicle both are combined as well as the uh, filling of both so you can fill uh, fuel also and you can fill this electric power also so that is plug in hybrid electric vehicle and the last type of that is the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles so these hydrogen fuel cell vehicles they are under research uh, large uh, research is going on nowadays and i think it is not commercialized yet okay so these are the all the types of vehicles i hope you have understood all these and now i have downloaded few videos for you that is how electric car works so there is a comparison showing video between the electric vehicle versus gasoline vehicle then history of evolution of uh, this electric vehicles then various components and specifications of various models so you can uh, go through all these i'll not show you all these videos uh, but i'll show you these two case studies one is this mercedes eqc model uh, which is showing its technical animation and tesla model s showing its animation bmw i3 is one more so i'll show you two of these models all these are available on net so you can download them you can see them you can prepare your uh, study material and uh, you can prepare your activity so i'll run this particular